<laughs> well, you said, na, look at what? Look at Bacchanal for Erin Fest. And it's happening on the 1st of October, featuring the world's greatest football team. Nah, the world's greatest Fet Match team. I-95.5 FM. And they're coming up against Lease Oilers Limited. Who island what? Anyway. Lease Oilers Limited. So go out and put on your orange and support the world's greatest fat match team. I-95.5 FM. As they take on Lease Oilers Limited. Led by Desmond Duki. And I hear they have entertainment too, eh? They bring the police to avoid the cocktail. Saying how they have entertainment by the Trinidad and Tobago Police Band. Huh? This Sunday, on episode 39 of Eye on Dependency, reality radio at its best. Graphic warning labels are proven to reduce tobacco use, whether it's to prevent kids from starting to use or to prompt smokers to get the help they need to quit. If you are an importer, retailer, supplier, or user of tobacco products, this show is for you. In keeping with new packaging requirements coming into effect this month, as well as other health concerns regarding tobacco and vaping, we welcome two Ministry of Health officials to tell us all about it. Joining us will be Jaron Collymore of the Ministry's Tobacco Control Unit and Dr. Mark West of the NCRAJ's Lung Cancer Unit. Listen live on I-95.5 FM from 10 a.m. or watch the live stream on the I on Dependency Facebook page or YouTube channel. I on Dependency. We don't just share stories. We change lives. I on Dependency with Garth and Natasha. Reality Radio, at its best, where every life is a biography. Sundays, at 10 a.m., and exclusively, on i95.5 FM. And streamed live, on the I on Dependency Facebook page, and YouTube channel. Welcome to Independency and thank you for tuning in on I-95.5 FM and our live streams on Facebook and YouTube. Good morning, Carl. Morning, Natasha. Good morning, Trinidad and Tobago and welcome once again to Independency. And we have a very informative program for you this morning, something that we hope, I know some principals and some of you, some of them still in church, but we'll save that for the next mm-hmm. hour when they get home so that... But if you know a principal, vice principal, teacher, school safety officer, deans, school security guards, and of course parents, we have something to show you here this morning that you need to keep to the front of your mind. And of course, if you're a supplier, importer, seller, of tobacco products you are required from today or even yesterday to ensure full compliance with the Tobacco Control Act and its supporting regulations in which cigarette manufacturers must print illustrations that warn about the dangers (coughs) of smoking and cigarette packs and other products. To take us through that this morning, to help us with that, we have both gentlemen representing the Ministry of Health in Dr. Mark West and Mr. Jereen Collimo. We will be speaking to Dr. West and then we get so Dr. West will speak to what are the health risks attributed to smoking now that we don't know but you need to be reminded because we have children now who are being sold these products, not now, very long time, but a change is coming. Why is it important to stop smoking? Where people can seek help if they are trying to stop smoking. And most importantly, vaping, 
why should it be discouraged? We have some features, a couple, two, three minute features for you. The most important one for me is identifying these, the paraphernalia, the vaping products. You would be surprised that there might be a vape, vape pen right in your living room this morning and you can't, wouldn't recognize it because they are coming disguised. Remember I told you all, war won the war on dr drugs, won the war on drugs <laughs> because people now are coming up with ingenious ways for our children especially to continue to use their, their succession planning, you know, even in the drug world. Remember, nicotine is a drug. It's a legal drug and... and Just and, like alcohol. And one of the... I'm sure that, that um, tobacco manufacturers, cigarette manufacturers, are looking actively looking into getting into the vaping market. So we will touch, I'm sure, on today in, in what the regulations are as far as tobacco products are concerned and, and when we will see some regulation on vaping as well, which is, has been touted as, as a smoking secession um, device, but we are learning now as, as more people, young people especially are affected, that it has many more dangers to health um, than, than we realize. So um, and we, we, we're excited to have this conversation this morning about how these, these products are going to be regulated in Trinidad and Tobago. Correct. So let's go to that quick break. Give you a chance to settle in. Remember, you can join us live on our Facebook page, I on Dependency, that's EYE on Dependency, or YouTube channel of the same name. Or listen to us on the radio. We'll try to describe what we're showing. But you know they say the proof is in the pudding, right? We want you to see what it looks like. And prepare yourself to intervene when you have to, especially at school, especially secondary school level, especially at the prestige schools. Hmm. Because they have the, some, most of them have the means to actually buy it online and have it delivered straight to their door. Vape pens are not illegal in the country. So, and then we, we had a, a close relative who was introduced to vaping in school yep. by another school child. Yep. His grandmother went away with him and he convinced her to buy, imagine a grandmother buying vape pens for a grandson. For a 13 year old. For a 13 year old. Well, we know some grandparents trying to, you know, purchase the ticket to heaven. So they, they, they give in. But sometimes you need to stand and say, no, don't, can't, I'm not buying that product for, for you. We'll talk more, more about that when we return with Dr. West. Stay right there. We'll be back. Don't become a headline. Doing construction, picking fruit or trimming trees? Keep bamboo rods, ladders, scaffolding, roof beams, oversized material of any type, and body parts at least 15 feet from electricity poles and lines. Before doing any type of work close to overhead lines or to the point of connection to your home, and before digging where there are underground lines, contact T and Tech for a temporary disconnection so you can work safely. T and Tech, the power to make it work. Finally, Welcome Relief comes in the form of a scientific-based program that shows us how to manage through the tough, current challenges. Called Habitalism, it features best-selling author on positivity and happiness, Dr. Tal Ben-Shahar, integrated with the award-winning Intangents methodology of Ross. Visit Habitalism.me to register now for this free life-transforming program endorsed by the United Nations established University for Peace. Gifted by Guardian Group. Live easy. Happy. Talk to you now, boy. Got well, a small work for you to do. You make a quick 10 G's. What are you going to do for me? 10 G's? What are you going to do there, boy? What are you doing? Taking your boat, running up the islands, pick up some people, and then bring them back here for me. That's all you have to do. 
That's why I like human trafficking, man. That's a serious crime. I can't make that. Trafficking in human beings is a serious violation of a person's human rights. It violates a person's right to freedom of movement, freedom of choice, freedom of speech, and freedom of identity. It is a heinous crime which affects local, regional, and international peace and security. A victim of human trafficking is subjected to many types of abuse. The crime destroys a person's dignity and self-worth. Victims often feel hopeless, are suicidal, and are stigmatized in their communities. Child victims are deprived of their rights to education, play, and social interactions. They are essentially robbed of their childhood and that can never be regained once those years have passed. If we do little or nothing to fight against human trafficking in our country, we can face economic sanctions from international agencies and partners. Our country will be losing money. Doing little or nothing to fight against human trafficking will tarnish our country's international image and most of all, the value we place on human life. Human trafficking is no respect of persons. Anyone can be a victim. So let us all strive to safeguard human life and dignity in Trinidad and Tobago. We are the Counter Trafficking Unit of the Ministry of National Security, Trinidad and Tobago, safeguarding human life. Eye on Dependency with Garth and Natasha. Reality Radio, at its best, where every life is a biography. Sundays at 10 a.m. and exclusively on i95.5 FM. And streamed live on the Eye on Dependency Facebook page and YouTube channel. Alright, folks. Thank you for staying with us. Um, and let's get right into our program this morning. Let, allow me to introduce Dr. Mark West. He is the specialist medical officer of the Lung Cancer and Thoracic Malignancy Unit in the North Central Regional Health Authority. Welcome, Dr. West. Good morning, Dr. West. Good, good morning, and Natasha. Thank you so much for having me on your program to discuss this very important topic and aspect of life in Trinidad and Tobago. Now, um, Mr. Colimo, can you hear us as well? Good morning to you too. We'll come to you in a moment, but thank you very much for sitting in with us this morning as well. Yes, good morning, Gat and Natasha. Thanks for inviting me to your program and also to the audience too as well. You're welcome. And we thank the Communications Unit of the Ministry of Health for providing us with this platform this morning for, for our viewers and listeners to be educated. Now, Dr. West, um, I think we, we, we need to hear you as clear as we just heard Mr. Collymore. So if you can make any adjustments because we don't want the audience to miss anything that you have to say. And um, so can you check your mic again? I, how is that? Is much that better. That's much better. Much yes. better. <laughs> right. Okay. So. Sorry about that. Right, so let's get right into it, Doc. Um, this is a very important week for the Ministry of Health and, of course, what are some of the, 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 the I should say, the, um, help me out here, Natasha, <laughs> the, the requirements, the, especially for, for businesses, but... In terms of compliance. In terms of compliance and so on. With the Tobacco Control right. Act. But we want to start off by um, getting your perspective as a medical professional about the health risks attributed to smoking, which is a pervasive um, you know, activity. Again, as we mentioned earlier, it's a legal drug. But from your perspective as, as a healthcare practitioner, what are the health risks? associated with smoking especially for women who are pregnant so go ahead doctor okay. again good morning um i am the head of the lung cancer and thoracic malignancy unit but we function as a big unit where we have other specialists involved i'm a surgeon we have other surgeons and we have physicians uh, so Regarding cigarette smoking specifically, the 
Hannah, help. No, Dr. West, um, just, just a second. Just a second. Um, we're losing you a we're little bit. We're losing you a little bit. And th- we, I know everything you have to say is very important. So we were hearing you a while ago, but something happened. So let's see, because you're singing a little wavy in and out. Yeah, I realize. I'm not sure why. Uh, and I'm sure those who are listening, especially online, you know, where they... Well, let's how, go ahead and see if it improves. Let's... Um, how does that sound? All right, let, let's let's go. Try it. Go ahead. Okay, let me know. So, the Pan American Health Organization has identified four main causes of death throughout the world and in Trinidad and Tobago. What is called cardiovascular diseases, cancers, lung diseases, and diabetes. These are said to be non-communicable diseases in the group and right at the center and causation of all of them is cigarette smoking or tobacco consumption. That is to say, cigarette smoking is the dead center of a whole base of NCDs. And we have seen dramatic effects of NCDs in the recent past, with the advent of COVID, and most of the victims suffered from NCDs. So, this gives you an encompassing reality of how dangerous cigarette smoking is, and how it permeates all the diseases and affects majority of those with these is in the world and in Trinidad and Tobago. Could you, when could you, you yes. Um, so what you will do, what we'll, Dr. West, one second. Um, what we'll do, you can mute your microphone, keep your camera on, but we'll call you on your phone. All right, so um, because as I said, we, we, it's, it's sounding very patchy and you, maybe your internet is giving you some problems this morning. So, um, we will we will call you on your cell phone and we okay, um, the, the phone lines working your, um, yeah so mic. i mute right. yeah so um our operator will be calling you right now so <laughs> you can keep your camera on and just mute yourself um, yes and talk to us on on the phone not okay Right, folks, if you're just joining us, um, you know, this is, we apologize. This is a very important topic, and we wouldn't like you all to miss anything Dr. West has to say, um, especially we have um, some photos as well uh, for you to see. And, of course, the vaping pens is something that you must see because if you have a highlighter sitting on your living room table, that could be a vaping and you think it's just a simple highlight or a marker. That's how ingenious they have gotten. So, um, we, we're speaking with Dr. West about that and a lot more with health concerns about smoking. Now, there, there are women who smoke while pregnant and try as we may to get them to understand that once you smoke, your feet are smoking as well with you. And what they still do it, they still drink too when they're pregnant. And which is something that should not happen. But then this is all part of what they call succession planning for these big time manufacturers. And try try as we may. We we we've tried to get the alcohol dis, um, distillers here and tobacco people as well with co to join with us. And, and let's try and just like N- just as NLCB did, you know, NLCB felt they, that they, they needed to show their corporate responsibility and now they provided a hotline problem for gamblers. And and you, you didn't hear NLCB complain about losing sales. So it's the same thing with 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 Angostura and with Co. We tried to reach out to them to let them know, uh, you know, you could you could join us, you could support us. To help us get messages out there, and 
um, as you would realize, is like pulling teeth. So, but we will persevere. We will continue is what advocacy is all about. And it makes people uncomfortable, but it is what it is. So we have Dr. West with us again. Dr. West? I see you. Right, so you'll take off your radio by you, Sirly, as you said, mute your microphone, but speak to us via phone. Give me a dry age steak. That's what I'm talking about. I gotta be honest, I don't even really consider it the way. Right, Dr. are you there? I am here. I can hear me. Yes. Right, yes. <laughs> Thank you. Okay, right. so okay. we have a plan B, thank God. So, right, so you, so you have to start again. The health risks associated are attributed to smoking. Right, again, thank you, Garth and Natasha. Um, what I was saying was that when the Pan American Health Organization, which is a, pro, which is a subunit of the World Health Organization, looked at. Dr. Post, West, I'm sorry to interrupt again, but you need, can you turn down the volume on your radio if you have one on? I we don't get have. Um, you, um, did you mute your microphone? Or on mute your mic on, on the video call. Right. How is that? On now? the volume on the computer, sorry. Well, I've turned off the volume on the computer. Right. All right. Okay, go ahead. Okay? Yes, How is much that better. better. Right, okay. So, as I was saying, the Pan American Health Organization has looked at all causes of death um, for non communicable diseases. And they have divided this into four main categories cardiovascular diseases, such as heart attacks and strokes cancers of all kinds, lung diseases, and diabetes. And when they analyzed their data, it was clearly shown that tobacco smoking is at the root cause of all these more four main causes of NCDs. And we have been recently re reminded of the significance of NCDs in the recent COVID pandemic, where it was clearly shown that patients who had NCDs were at higher risk of death while they got COVID. So it is not surprising to note that by cigarette smoking, you would have increased your risk of death during the NCDs, and overall, you increased the risk of diseases. The main diseases associated with cigarette smoking uh, lung diseases, such as something called chronic obstructive pulmonary disease, or COPD. And a recent study by Professor Terence C. Mungle, Dean of the Medical School at UWI, who is also a lung specialist or pulmonologist, identified that there were over 50,000 patients suffering from COPD in Trinidad and Tobago in what was called the BOLD study. In addition, of course, Smoking causes cancer, not only cancers of the lung, which we are clear about, but cancers of the mouth, the throat, the gullet, the bladder, the cervix, the stomach, the kidney, the pancreas. It is huge. So by just smoking alone, you've increased your risk tremendously by getting a form of cancer. Smoking also affects the blood vessels so-called cardiovascular system, which I mentioned before. It dramatically increases the risk of heart disease, strokes, diseases affecting your lower limb, the blood vessels where they don't get enough blood supply. and You have problems with your circulation, and unfortunately, we have seen amputations because of this. But let me bring you to another effect of cigarette smoking, psychological dependency. Psychological component, as we know, of many problems, we're becoming increasingly aware. But for people who, cig who smoke cigarettes regularly, they're more likely to become psychologically dependent on it or addicted. And these people, unfortunately, tend to become, can become more psychologically dependent on other things as well, and other forms of what we call substance abuse. So I don't want to continue on over and over, but... The cigarette smoking culture has brought with it multiple diseases and deaths throughout the world and here in Trinidad and Tobago. And for me and my co-workers at the lung cancer unit, we see regularly 
many patients presenting with lung cancers and different types of cancers. And these people, unfortunately, for them, it's too late to prevent the cancers, and they're often very regretful of this. It is also a legacy of the past. One of our biggest cultural exponents is carnival. And obviously, in the past, people uh, used to smoke quite a bit. Some of our famous band leaders, some be- you might remember the band Barbarossa. Um, the band leader there, Mr. Richard Afong, was unfortunately a patient of mine with lung cancer. He subsequently demised. Roland St. George, another famous band man from South, same story, cigarette smoking and demise. And these are just some highlights of the number of people who partook in cigarette smoking all through their lives and, of course, at Carnival and associated cultural exponenza and have paid the ultimate price. Now, Dr. So, West, yes? Dr. West, um, yes. as, as, as you rightly said, uh, it is you, you. You don't want to go on and on about this, but however, you need to go on and on because, first of all, hear how many things you described in that this little mid time we, we've had here, right? And for those of you just joining us, Natasha, just remind them who we're speaking with again, so yes. that we, yeah, so that they could understand. Dr. West is speaking from a position of authority. Yes, Dr. Mark West is the specialist medical officer with the Lung Cancer and Thoracic Malignancy Unit at the NCRHA. And we also have on the line, and I hope he, he may jump in from time to time as we're having this conversation, is Jureen Collimore. He's the manager of the Tobacco Control Unit of the Ministry of Health. Right, and Mr. Collimore, they're going after the big boys. But let's, <laughs> let's, let's, the Dr. West, now we're looking at the fallouts here. Now, Dr. West, you know, as well as I do, folks, and you can join us on our Facebook page and YouTube channel, EYE on Dependency, if you want to see what we have to show you here in a while. You need to see this. Dr. West, nicotine is a drug. It's highly addictive. Dr. West, I'm sure you work with people who at some point in time during the day, they must take a smoke break. Do you know if people working overnight ask anybody to do a, an, an entire night shift without p- getting that nicotine fix, you're going to have a very angry person on your hands. Despite all of that, and all of you just outlined, people still are buying cigarettes. Cigarettes have gone up from every, every year, every other year. Cigarettes continue to increase, and just now a, cig- a pack of cigarettes will be $100, and people will still buy it. How w- you, 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 how does you that are planned? Speak to that, does that speak to the, the addictive nature of nicotine, or, or is it something else because it is so pervasive? Or is it the legality of it? Well, let me give you a shocking reality about the addiction power. It's both physical and psychological or mental, if you like, and it's a very tight grip it has on a person. There are quite a few, unfortunately, medical practitioners who smoke. Yes. Mm. They know very well, having learned through medical school, seen patients, seen their colleagues suffer. They know, but they smoke. There are not in Trinidad and Tobago, as far as I'm aware, but I've seen others. I'm a heart and lung surgeon. I, I know there are other heart and lung surgeons, or there are heart and lung surgeons in the world who, who smoke? smoke. Wow. So they know these realities. They see the realities, yet still they partake of this, if you like, damaging themselves and those around them. Right. Killing, killing off themselves, reducing their productivity, and they still do it. So despite the obvious hard reality, this, prod, this, this culture, this disease has that kind of grip. And Dr. So West, let me, let me yeah. just throw this in too. The prisoners in our sis- prison system, we have seen officers put their career on the line to get cigarettes to prisoners, among other things. Now, we, we, and then yet we fail to understand that is, that is the power of addiction is the power of nicotine and if people prepare to put their lives and career on the line so that they can please a, a, a few who smoke we can understand how powerful this is right it's a, a very powerful if you like enemy 
the actual product and the marketing and hype that goes behind it. If you study the history of cigarette smoking, I'm going back. Cigarette smoking initially started in tobacco in the Americas, South America, and was brought to Europe. It was quickly disseminated through Europe, and then the Europeans started selling it throughout the world, and it was popularized during the wars. It is a legacy of the wars and our colonial heritage, a yoke which we are still to completely throw off. It is a fight to break this uh, addiction and control. And, of course, also the funding that goes back to these large multinationals. You're talking about billions, if not trillions of dollars a year. Trillions. As you rightly said, they're putting things in place to ensure that they fund, this fund of money still continues. It is quite clearly the legal selling of addictive drugs, which we know is a, a reality and it is legal. But we have to put in place um, as much possible things as possible to hold that back. And what... We, where we need to start is in the schools and the education system. And um, we are, in our unit, we focus on that. There is, on May the 31st, every year, World No Tobacco Day. And we host a competition for schools based on that throughout the country. And we have plans to expand it even further, so primary and secondary schools, so that we educate the children as they come through year in, year out, about the dangers of tobacco consumption. That is where you must, that is the first bridge to try and stop this. There are others as well, but that is the first one, and we are addressing that. Now, Mr. Colin Moore is going to speak. He's going to also speak about the education and the fines that the government, the Ministry of Health, have been putting in place. And they're doing this because they know, we know the effects. We spend a lot of money treating our citizens with COPD, cardiovascular disease, diabetes, and lung disease, all related to tobacco. So in the long run, it is us, the country, through our taxation, that have to pay for this. And Dr. West, um, <clears throat> as pervasive as, as tobacco consumption is, um, and the, despite the efforts to prevent the onset of, of smoking, alongside that, I suppose, needs to be an effort at um, cessation. 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 Sorry. cessation. Cessation, yes. Cessation. So why, um, I, I'm assuming that because of the, the, the powerful addictive nature of nicotine, that is extremely difficult. But why is it important for persons who currently smoke to stop or to try and make an attempt to stop? Okay, that's the question. Now, uh, when we speak about addiction, I want to be clear about this so that people understand. It is not just the nicotine alone. It is the psychological addiction as well. As uh, Mr. Sinclair Gard was talking about, you know, in this stressful situation, right, you feel for a cigarette. It is the stress which helps to relieve. The actual act of smoking helps to relieve that stress. You will feel better. Ah, yes, I feel better now. But to answer your question, why is it important? Because by stopping smoking, you dramatically improve your health. You also reduce the risk of the cardiovascular diseases, the heart attacks, the strokes, the peripheral diseases, and, of course, the risk of lung diseases, COPD, which I mentioned, chronic obstructive pulmonary disease, and cancers. So by stopping, you do not completely eliminate the risk, particularly if you've been smoking 10 and 20 years, but you bring it down significantly. And that allows you to get a fighting chance. Coupled with that, we're now bringing in practices, medical practices, to look for the diseases that you have, may have, heart diseases, they're screening for that, lung cancer, we're beginning to screen for other types of cancers. We are now being much more proactive in looking for these diseases for people who have smoked. And for one of the big messages should, that should go out is if you have been a smoker or you are a smoker, you should contact your medical practitioner and say, look, I heard such and such on this program. What are my risks? I want to stop or I have stopped. How can you help me to look for the problems that might have occurred? Now, Dr. West... Um if you're just joining us, folks, you're listening to our independency, of course, and we are speaking with Dr. Mark West and Natasha 
could give you a little more information on Dr. West before I ask this, this other question. And remember, those who listen on the radio, welcome. And those of you who are free to join us on Ion Dependency on Facebook or YouTube. That's E-Y-E-O-N Dependency on Facebook and YouTube because we have a, an entire section dedicated to vaping that we want you to pay attention to. All right? So, um, Dr. West, here, here's the problem we have. We have parents who smoke. Children, I mean, I, I remember growing up and sometimes we wait going on inside. People, old men playing cards and they flick their Broadway outside. And the, the young boys, especially curious, would run and pick it up and take a puff. And this is how some children start to smoke because it's at home already with them. How we, and we can, the ministry cannot monitor parents and their homes and how they operate. But how do you reach out to parents who smoke at home and their children inhaling that snake and smoke? But they, they cannot stop their parents from smoking. And then some of those children will take one or two of those cigarettes when the father falls asleep and carry it to school and get their curious friends to go in the back of the school and take a puff with them. How, how are we fixing that one? Right, so this is a cultural issue, as you rightly identified. These things, practices, still exist. They existed. They were far more prevalent in the past. In fact, it used to go as far as that the children used to light cigarettes for their family. Uh, their that mother. too, yes. Give it to them, as well as when you go send them to buy the cigarettes, where they used to take That's a little right. That's and right. No problem. The parents encourage it because the parents themselves were not aware of the serious dangers they were doing to themselves and to their children. And when we come on to pregnancy, that's the other aspect we want to touch on. Right. But the way to do it is we cannot, as you say, we cannot find them, we cannot monitor them in the homes. It has to be through education and programs like this. And we need to have multiple types of programs like this where we discuss addiction in general, mental health, and psychological dependency on tobacco and alcohol and other other issues which we have in this country. Let me be clear. While we have a problem, we are slowly improving. It's like pushing a big cart up a hill. The health awareness in Trinidad and Tobago is much better in 2022 than it ever was in this country. There are still problems, which is one of the things we are addressing here. But we are getting through, and we should continue with what we are doing, which is an educational format to educate the children, the teachers, make it a cultural issue, and that in that way, over time, we will eradicate um, a lot of the uh, addictive type um, our practices we have and tobacco in this country. Let me be clear, we do not want to see anybody smoking. While it is their right to do so, we know the price that they will have to pay directly and secondhand smoke for other people. And laterally, when they get sick, when they end up in hospitals, and if they are in the public sector, then you and I and everybody else in the country have to pay for them. This is something which is totally preventable. So mm -hmm. education is the way to go, uh, God. And when we're talking about um, C-Session as well, um, I mean, we, we are accustomed here on our independence to talk, talking about drug, drug treatment and drug rehabilitation. But you're hardly going to hear someone going into rehab for, cigarette, for nicotine, right? <coughs> Although we've had one or two cases where people actually check themselves into rehab for yeah. nicotine addiction. What, is, uh, what that does that bad. process look like, though, um, from a medical professional's standpoint? How is it necessary or is, is it more helpful to, to stop in that, in that kind of treatment or rehabilitative setting? Or is it something that has to, has to be done in the context of the person's life and they have to sort of... Um, because it's, it's a different, as you keep mentioning, you know, it's a cultural thing. It's a, it's a pervasive um, behavior and practice. So how does, what does treatment look like? Or what does the session actually look like? Okay, so let me be a little clearer. Declare. I'm not a cessation expert. <laughs> okay. However, I have dealt with patients who have gone through processes. And basically it comes down to the person and there are two ways of doing it. Um, they, we have to deal with both the psychological and the physical addiction. That's the first thing. 
sorry, that's the second thing. The first thing to realize is, is the patient themselves have to say, yes, I am addicted and I want to stop because of such and such reasons. Having a, a, a gained that insight, the patient is then more likely to undergo the treatment program. Now, some people, very few, can do what they call stop cold turkey and remain that way because of the heavy physical and psychological addictions. Most people try to do it in a stepwise fashion with um, a smoking cessation clinic, and we have them attached to the health centers in North Central, in Chaguanas, um, in uh, Rima, in the east in San Grande, in south in San Fernando, I believe also in Port of Spain, and they're incorporated there. Um, we, they, patients are put through a program of gradual withdrawal and also um, use of other, other products. Now, this is where we have to come on to the vaping situation. Uh, I know it's a separate sub-discussion. Vaping does allow people to continue with the nicotine uh, hit as well as the, act, the physical act of putting something in their mouth, which is what the psychological component is, and it then triggers a, a release and a reduction in stress. But vaping is not as dangerous for uh, cancer causation as tobacco, cigarette smoking, but it is there. Vaping is dangerous. Now, Dr. West? Over the years, we found there have been a lot of studies now. I don't want to, you know, encroach you a bit, but, but, but Natasha did ask about it. So vaping has been used and is used worldwide as a way of trying to wean yourself off of tobacco. It comes with a price as well. Now, Dr. Uh, West, then, someone is, is listening to you out in the U.S. and they have a question. Yeah, she sure. was asking about, about the dangers of secondhand smoke. I, it, th this, again, is something that has been um, been talked about in, in the media and in, in public service announcements, and, so, and we, we understand what it means. Um, could, could you speak to that? Sure. Um, studies have shown that for people who smoke, the exhalation of what they breathe out plus the burning end of the cigarettes are producing chemicals. Uh, the chemicals in tobacco are very serious diseases. There are cancer, specifically cancer-causing drug uh, chemicals called benzoyl pyrenes. These are found in tobacco. They cause cancer. You have car exhaust. It's found in car exhaust, in coal, in charred meat very, very carcinogenic uh, chemicals. So you can inhale it or you can just burn it and it'll be like standing next to a big fire and you're inhaling the smoke. These things are known to cause cancers in those who just simply inhale the smoke. Other drugs which are in tobacco which come off the end of a burning cigarette, not just inhale but just come off, things like hydrogen cyanide, formaldehyde, benzene, carbon monoxide, from uh, polonium, which is radioactive, and polyaromatic hydrocarbons. All these things you inhale when you smoke and you bring it in, but also comes off the end of the cigarette as it's lit and burning. So people around, we have a number, we have a phenomenon of females who have never smoked in their life who get lung cancer. And one of the big postulates is that they get it from their partners, usually husbands, who have been smoking. Also, there's something called tertiary smoking, where it comes off the actual uh, surrounding products, such as chairs and furniture, sheets and bed sheets. So, it's not as dramatic as an atomic bomb, but it can be used and imagined. Once this is dropped, you have all this other product coming off the end of the cigarette, but or the cigarette, the lit end of the cigarette, which people then inhale it. And the clear studies have shown that people do get the diseases that I've spoken about, which are cancer, cardiovascular diseases, associated with what is now called secondhand smoke by simply being around people who smoke. And in fact, this fact has been used to drive legislation throughout the world so that people can no longer smoke in closed work areas. Mr. Yes. Colimo will speak more about this as well. And it has been drove to ban cigarette smoking in the workplace. I'll say no more because Mr. Colmore will touch on that, I'm sure. 
but it is a big reality and it is a big danger. Dr. So West. Away from somebody who is smoking, basically. Dr. Yeah. West, Dr. Uh, Mr. Colimo, let me tell you something. You all have a very big task on your hand. Ask any smoker the grip. If, if someone does not go beyond um, cigarettes, lucky for them. But they will tell you that addiction is just as strong as a crack addiction. I could tell you that. I could say that safely without fear of contradiction. Because it is not something that it's easily, you can easily, I, I remember there were nights back in the day I coming home drunk and, 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 and smoking and, and oh God, I promised God all kind of thing. And as soon as I sober up the next day, I, I throw away the cigarette the night before, you know. Ask how, smoke, how many smokers would have done that. Crush up cigarettes in their hand and say, I'm done with this. And throw it away. And the next morning they sober up, they walk in order to buy more cigarettes. You see, the tobacco companies understand. And I always tell people that these tobacco, alcohol, they have lab with people in lab coats, you know. They study human beings, you know. They study the power of addiction, you know. They study dopamine release. Ask any smoker, they'll tell you, after they finish eat, that cigarette tastes glorious. But the second cigarette does not taste as good as the first one because of the dopamine now being turned down by the brain. And that is what causes some people to chain smoke because they want to experience that, you know, that first lovely euphoric feeling that you really don't achieve so it's really hard so i i don't envy you all i don't envy the task here at hand well i think now is it might be a good time to bring in uh, mr colimo um who is the manager of the tobacco control unit of the ministry of health to let us know what what his unit um is responsible for and how it is it is tackling this this very big issue and, and before we go to the vaping session, because remember today yeah. we have a vaping segment for you all. And again, calling all principals, vice principals, teachers, school safety officers, deans, school security guards. Try to get your device on our independency on Facebook and YouTube, please. Because school has started and you will be running into this. And you have your part to play as well. All right. So, Mr. Colimo. Hi. Good morning again, Gart and Natasha. Thanks for inviting me again. Well, um, considering the role of the back control unit, our role is under the Ministry of Health. And it's, it's a unit um, that was set up by the, by the Minister of Health and Parliament based on the Tobacco Control Act, which was passed in 2009, where that the main aim of the act, act is to ensure prevent the tobacco use for the entire population, especially children. Because based on um, the, a survey in 2011, most persons trying to start smoking before the age of 80, 17 years. Some as actually early as 13 and, 13 and 15 years. Mm. So yep. we actually sensitize the population with dangers of smoking, prevent, as you were talking earlier, um, tobacco, um, secondhand smoking, especially the exposure from for children, as well also to regulate um, smoking, to ensure that, okay, that um, things are regulated uh, based on the act, like all tobacco manufacturers, importers, um, wholesalers, distributors are required to actually have a license to, um, to, to sell tobacco in the country. Mm. Too. And also based on the act too, we also partner with certain enforcement agencies. You talk about um, partnering, like police service, the multi-agency task force, customs, to ensure the act is enforced meaning that um, things that doesn't conform to the act, like illicit products, like we, um, we're talking about today, the healthcare warnings that ensure all tobacco products meet, meet the specific packaging label requirements according to regulations. So that's one of the main overarching aim. Also to report on the progress of um, prevalence rates reduction from to PAHO, Pan American Health Organization, WHO. So we have to ensure that our main mandate is to ensure a tobacco-free nation. That's our mandate in, in TC right now. No. That that, go ahead. Mr. Colimo, uh, you just, I, I know you, 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 you're out the gate already, but <clears throat> we, we just need to pull you back a bit <clears throat> because we want, <coughs> we want to give people enough time 
to log on to see this and as well after this break we're going to come back and wrap up with dr west i'm going to say wrap up his segment here but he will stay on with us to continue the discussion because dr west will have to tell us where people can seek help if they are trying to stop um he he, he spoke to the he's um that there, there's, there's a there's a machine that sometimes i don't know if we have that here that long machine where they have to, to put people dr west we have that here or you you ever had to use it here on people to keep to help people keep breathing or oh, am i um yes there are machines that will assist in the, the breathing of patients who have lung diseases whether it be from cigarette smoking or other diseases there are diseases people at home there right. are people in america and here who are on continuous oxygen patients who have copd they they drag their cylinders around mm. Uh, there are people who've had to have lung transplants because of COPD. Right. Uh, and many don't get that far, unfortunately, and it's not feasible. Um, but there are treatments that are available. But, you know, who should want to undergo this if you can avoid it? All right. So let's let's go to this break. Hinkson, let's go to a break. And again, calling out principals, vice principals, teachers, school safety officers, deans of discipline, school security guards, parents. This segment coming up here is for you. You're going to see what vaping does to your body. Vaping, um, a bit, someone who was actually addicted to it, why they had to quit. You're going to see students hiding vaping in plain sight. Vaping pens and, and other equipment. And there's a thing called jeweling as well. You're going to learn all about that this morning. Right here on our independency. So remember, you can join us on our independency on Facebook. That E-Y-E-O-N dependency on Facebook or YouTube channel. And while you're there, you can like and subscribe. Let's go to that break. We'll be back with some very important information for you. Stay right there. Hmm. We... The sex trafficking thing is a serious thing in a way. Sex trafficking? Mm-hmm. Mm. I thought it was only human trafficking, I thought. But what do you mean? No serious thing, boy. Where you get that from? I don't know about human trafficking, not about sex trafficking. So how can you spot and identify perpetrators and children who are victims of trafficking? Many victims who are children do not look like under 18 years old. Child victims often move escorted around alone or in small groups. They also live in shared and even packed rooms and have very little clothing and belongings. Child victims are often seen with adults who are not their parents, their relatives or their caregivers. Migrant children are often unaccompanied and separated from their parents. Child victims are often engaged in work that is not suitable for children. They are often deprived of their freedom to go to school, to play, and to enjoy being a child. Perpetrators have unexplained sources of income and possessions. They are businessmen and businesswomen running legitimate and illegitimate businesses. Perpetrators may appear to be the victim's friend, boyfriend, close relative, or employer. We are the counter-trafficking unit of the Ministry of National Security, Trinidad and Tobago, safeguarding human life. Don't become a headline. Doing construction, picking fruit or trimming trees? Keep bamboo rods, ladders, scaffolding, roof beams, oversized material of any type, and body parts at least 15 feet from electricity poles and lines. Before doing any type of work close to overhead lines or to the point of connection to your home and before digging where there are underground lines, contact t and Tech for a temporary disconnection so you can work safely. t and Tech, the power to make it work. Finally, Welcome Relief comes in the form of a scientific-based program that shows us how to manage through the tough, current challenges called Habitalism. It features best-selling author on positivity and happiness, Dr. Tal Ben-Shahar, integrated with the award-winning Intangents methodology of Ross. Visit Habitalism.me to register now for this free life-transforming program endorsed by the United Nations-established University for Peace. 
gifted by Guardian Group. Live easy. Eye on Dependency with Garth and Natasha. Reality Radio, at its best, where every life is a biography. Sundays at 10 a.m. and exclusively on i95.5 FM. And streamed live on the Eye on Dependency Facebook page and YouTube channel. All right. So thank you for staying with us. You're listening to Eye Dependency. And if you're just joining us, we are speaking with Mr. Jaron Collimore, the manager of the Tobacco Control Unit of the Ministry of Health, and Dr. Mark West, Specialist Medical Officer, Lung Cancer and Thoracic Malignancy Unit, NCRAG. Now, Dr. West, before we share these features with the audience, you, you're, you're also focused, and your unit also focused on discouraging vaping. Could you elaborate on that, please, for us, before we show these um, special features that we have. Sure, oh, thank you. Well, vaping is a phenomenon which was or has been popularized over the last, say, 10 years in which nicotine, which is the um, main vasoactive amine in cigarettes, has been distilled into an oil. The oil is then heated electronically and that vapor is then inhaled in the patient or the person using it, giving them the nicotine hit with the dopamine and serotonin receptors. It was conceived as a way to consume nicotine more safely as opposed to cigarettes and allow people to wean off of cigarettes per se. In this regard, it has taken off in particular America and Europe and there's a lot of vaping going on in Trinidad. I will not go into the marketing and the various companies, but it is a way to sell these products and people make money. However, while vaping has been promoted as a safe alternative to cigarettes, it is not safe. It is less cancer-causing than cigarettes because it does not produce other things like tar, hydrogen cyanide, formaldehyde, uh, polycyclic uh, aromatic hydrocarbons, which go along with the cigarette. And it also has a reduced side stream for secondhand smoke. But vaping is dangerous. More and more information is being gathered about it. But it is hyped and marketed and is also promoted in that area which you talked about when people started cigarette smoking and things, maybe in their teens, and uh, Mr. Colmo has mentioned it, it's cool. It's cool to be doing this with their friends and you're getting this high and all these sorts of things. Uh, and it's a, it, 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 it's a fad. But the reality is that these are showing increasingly alarming causes of lung diseases with associated with vaping. One of the lung diseases is something called popcorn lung. Popcorn because the lungs become and look like popcorn. It is a highly inflammatory and dangerous problem. Then there's something called vaping-associated lung disease, or E-vaping-associated lung disease. And we are beginning to notice that the in, this is because of the inflammation caused by inhalation of foreign substances within the lung. I want to make an important association here. Two Fridays ago, in Paris, there was a very important meeting called ESMO, ESMO, the European Society of Medical Oncologists. And for the first time, they came out clearly to show that particulate matter, that is pollution, 2.5 micro, microns, are, caused, are, are the causation factors for pollution-derived lung cancer. What this seems to suggest is that particulate matter and inflammation are triggers for DNA changes within the lung that then go on to form lung cancer. And when you think about it, just about anything that you put into your lungs that cause inflammation may cause these DNA changes. These inflammation things such as vaping. It took a long while before it was absolutely proved because medical science has to be careful not to accuse anybody with wrong information to be able to say clearly that cigarette smoking caused lung cancer. 
we know this and accept this as a fact now. But in years to come, it may well show with the research that's going on that vaping with its inflammatory causation may be a trigger for lung cancer as well as many of the other inflammatory diseases, which is what we are seeing now. But medical science does not have the hard facts. We cannot say it for sure, but it is a warning. My, my message, as always, is that the only thing that you should put in your lungs is fresh air. Stay away from pollution, stay away from cigarettes, and stay away from vaping. Now, Dr. West, if people don't believe you about vaping, let's go to that first video, Natasha, and we'll come back. We have some more questions on Facebook some people are asking, so we could, we could ask that. Um, we could ask the, the practitioners here that. But if, no, if people don't believe you on vaping and it looks, ty- it looks stylish and all of that, Let's put the icing on the cake to what you just said here. And I've always said that anything that could make you blow 10 times more smoke than a normal cigarette cannot be healthy. It's, it's, it's madness. So let's go to that, let's go to that first one. And this what one va- focuses on, um, on what vaping actually does to the body. Calling all principals, teachers, school safety officers. This is your segment here. Let's go short one. Tough news for 2019 as we now know more information about the record setting vaping crisis. During the last year, the CDC reports 54 people died and more than 2,500 were put in the hospital nationwide this year due to vaping related injuries. Now, new cases are still being reported weekly. This morning, two works for used Del Puente shows us what a single puff could do to your lungs. Cardiac surgeon Lucian Durham says inhaling a single puff from a vape could make you his next patient. The lung damage he's seen in patients ranging in age from 16 to 60 is the equivalent to someone smoking cigarettes for decades. It literally can kill you the first time you try it. He says the liquid chemicals are the culprit. When they are all flash heated at once, no one can predict what you're about to breathe in. The unsafe ingredients may even sound harmless, like vitamin E oil. When you inhale it, it goes down and basically coats the alveoli. Those are tiny sacs of the lungs, which are crucial in your breathing. If that's coated, the exchange of oxygen and carbon dioxide cannot happen. So you get low oxygen and high CO2, and the high carbon dioxide in the blood turns into acid. Your body does not function well in an acidic environment. That causes an inflammatory response in your body called acute respiratory distress syndrome. They deteriorate very quickly, get short of breath, lightheaded, pass out, cardiac arrest. We've had a couple of them show up getting CPR because it's gotten so bad. And you end up on this scary machine until your body can safely breathe on its own again. We've had some patients come in that literally looked like they were going to die before we got them on support. He says a common myth is that patients only end up like this if they are vaping with THC, the chemical in marijuana that gives users a high. No, there's really no one particular substrate that causes it. That unpredictability is why he and health officials are warning that there is no safe way to vape. Jitzel Puente, Two works for you. The surgeon says he won't be able to tell if irreversible lung damage has been done on the patients he's treated for at least another six months to a year. So that, that was the first one, folks. Remember, you can join us on EYE on Dependency on YouTube or on Facebook. It gets more interesting as we go on. Dr. West, you're still there with us, right? Yes, God. Lovely. Let's go Very to important. the shop, man. Let's go to the other video. Six people have died and hundreds more have gotten sick because of a vaping-related lung illness. Well, tonight, we're talking to a man who used his vape every day from the time he was 15 until, by the age of 21, he had two collapsed lungs. He tells Contact 7 investigator David Clue, you should not trust the claim that vaping is a safe alternative to smoking. I would always argue how safe it was until it take effect on me. One year ago, the self-proclaimed vaping fanatic suffered a collapsed left lung. At this time, I didn't think vaping had anything to do with it. And I told him that, so I didn't stop. No, he did not. I liked the, the clouds, the nicotine. Then this summer, his love of vaping collapsed along with his right lung. My chest just got really tight and then I felt a sharp pain come through my back up to my chest. 
His choice of whether to quit had been flanked by his addiction. Now I believe it's vaping because it's the only thing I'm doing. His six days in the hospital costing his family thousands and costing him 30% of that right lung. A smoker gets the benefit of years of coughing, loss of taste and smell, warnings that something worse is on the horizon. But for vapors like Kyle, symptoms don't include a heads up. And we could be years from understanding why. Until we know a lot more information about exactly what ingredient is in the vape juice that's causing these deaths or serious illnesses, the best advice is to stay away from vaping. That's terrible news for the vaping industry, still untested, unregulated, and now under tremendous scrutiny. Still 40% of Denver teens have tried vaping, and half of those were still vaping this month. Kyle Lano sees that kind of statistic and pictures an entire generation clouded by false claims and fancy flavors, only to see the true costs coming into focus far too late. We have our whole lives ahead of us and we're going to end up on oxygen in our 20s, 30s. That was David Clue reporting. So that was a young man who... Uh, admittedly, and, and this is this is the trend that we're seeing now, that a lot of young people are attracted to these vaping devices and they are being sold the, um, the falsehood, really, that vaping is not as harmful as cigarette smoking. And they're being attracted as well by the marketing of these devices with, you know, the flavors and the, and the the cool moniker, right? Um, and as Garth mentioned earlier, um, a relative of mine um, was caught vaping in school and he's, he's just 13. Um, and that is because one of his friends in school brought the, the device to school and was you know, passing it around and everybody was trying it. So it's like the new, the new cigarette because I mean, a lot of us would, would, would have had experiences of trying to smoke something at that age and now they, you know, they have just as much access to um, to vapes as as we did in the past to to cigarettes. And we have we have people in in our country here now who are actually selling these devices, yes, unhindered by the and, law. And I want to you know? bring in Mr. Collymore here and and f to ask what what are the regulations, if any. Be, when be, but before we do that, Natasha, excuse yeah. me, sorry. Yeah. Um, could we just? I, I want people, yes, <laughs> because I, I, Mr. Collymore and Dr. West, if you saw some of these vaping devices in your home, I don't think you, and I, I mean, as much as long as you're all in the field, you wouldn't recognize them. So let's show parents now. And those of you watching, you have someone you can pass this one to. Each one, teach one, and tell one. Let's go to that students hiding vaping devices. You'll be surprised at what some of these vaping devices look like. We want to share that information with you this morning. To be forewarned is to be forearmed. Let's go to it. Take a close look. This student is outfitted with vaping devices, but you can't see them. Why? They're designed to look just like normal school gear for sale online and in vape shops, giving kids new ways to hide their vaping habits anywhere they go, including school. It's rampant. I think every administrator who has a middle school and high school are grappling with vaping issues. Superintendent Melissa Varley oversees the Berkeley Heights School District in New Jersey. It's virtually undetectable. We don't know if a student is vaping in a classroom. So would you know what to look for? We're taking over a classroom at this high school. It's filled with student volunteers. Thank you guys. We're going to plant these hidden vaping devices and bring in teachers and parents and see just how well they do at spotting the vape. I get to work. Here's one that's designed to look just like a black marker. Stashing stuff all over the classroom. So this guy looks like a USB. It's not, it's a vape. And on students too. Sophia looks like she's just wearing a regular hoodie, but underneath a vaping device. Some vapes even look just like school supplies. Looks just like a pen, but the vaping device is inside and you can write with it. Time to bring in our volunteers. I'm Vicki Wynn with the Today Show. It's nice to meet you. What's your name? Miss Moretti. Okay, Miss Moretti. Yes. We want to know if you can spot the vape. So, 
We have outfitted this classroom with vaping devices. Look high, look low. You ready? I think I'm ready. You get one minute. Okay. All right, here we go. She spots a couple of them. That device that Dom's got there. But breezes right past most. I think that could be. Before time Three, runs out. Two, ooh. and that is time. How many of you had a vaping device that she spotted? Three items, not bad. How many of you actually have vaping devices? But she missed 11 of the 14 items we hid. It's scary because it could be just in plain sight. Some teachers spot a couple of the more obvious ones. That looks like one, too. But most miss the harder to find items like this watch. Sam is wearing what looks like a smartwatch, oh. but if you press this button, mm -hmm. this part comes out. You can fill this with nicotine and it's an e-cigarette. It blends in so nobody would ever know. All five teachers missing this vape backpack. This one's got a hidden device right here in the strap. And I'm a hiker. I mean, this is the first thing I would think of as be a camelback so that we can get water through it. And the hoodie. I think it's ingenious marketing and I'm a little frightened. This could be happening right under your nose. Absolutely. It could be happening in my house. I have a 15 year old. Wow. So now no hoodies. Even this school aide, a retired police officer missing the watch and pen. Very disheartening that there's so many out there that the kids can get access to. What about parents? Will they do a better job spotting the vape? I think that's a vaping device. Not this group. He was writing with a pen, but inside the pen... <gasps> Got me. I'm going to go home and check pens. Parent after parent also mistaking the decoys for vapes. I was pointing at this one, but that looks one looks fairly uh, suspicious as well. That's just a marker, and they confuse the real vapes for regular items. What did you think this was? Didn't even think to look at that. Probably a marker, or an eraser, or a highlighter. The most any of our volunteers spotted just five of the 14 items we hid. That's 36 percent, a failing grade. It's very, very scary. An eye-opening experience for both teachers and parents. If you have to hide something, then there's something wrong with it. Scary to see how easily they can hide things like that. Parents need to be more invasive in their kids' spaces and really actively engaged. Yeah. Yeah, we reached out to the Vapor Technology Association. They told us they don't approve of underage use of these types of devices, and they're working to raise the purchase age to 21. I brought some of these items so you all could see. Yeah. You know, this one looks like a marker, and that's what people would mistake it for. Check that out. This is the highlighter we were talking about, Hoda. Oh, yeah. And then, you know, as you know. Let's show that watch. watch. That's great. Yeah, watches. Okay. This one, you just pop it out right here, mm -hmm. and it tells the time, so you can easily see that uh -huh. there's a digital this readout. Is, right. The this is crazy, is the one. hoodie. Nobody got the hoodie. Craig, I'll return your hood hoodie later. But, <laughs> uh, uh, no, but it's insane. I you're mean, right. that's like they a look... vaping thing in here. Vicky, but if, if right. you're, you're a teacher in class, like, wouldn't you see a kid who's like, even if they're... You would think so, but they break off into study groups, and that was what the teachers yeah. were telling us. You're dealing with 30 kids at Walk a time. Walk to the bathroom. Exactly, yeah. down the hall. I right. mean, it just makes it so much easier. And when you have a little tiny pen like this yeah. Yeah. that you can actually Look do your that. homework with. Yeah, that's yeah. crazy. It's a real big challenge for teachers and um, um, parents, and they were talking about schools have anti-tobacco campaigns. Check to see if your district has one like the one we were at. That's another way that you can stay on top of this yeah. and have those conversations with the kids as yeah. well. Vicky, All right, Vicky, thank, thank you. you. Thank, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Seeing those devices and thought that they were just a normal marker, pe and as I said, flash drive, flash drive and all of that. Innocuous. Now, people who go to prestige schools, they ha they would even have more access to because they have credit cards. They could order this stuff online. But right here in Trinidad and Tobago, Doctor West and Mister Collymore, there's a gas station right on Rice Road where you can get vape um, pens and and, and and oil. There's one in the mall, in several malls in Port of Spain. You can walk right in, and these people have no problem with selling to children these devices. Before we get your comment, we have one more to show you. Let's go to that. Chew on this, folks. Really, chew on this. I don't know how any of this works at all. So where do you put the fluid? Okay. Why do you need power? So it's empty. I know nothing about this. <laughs> yep, that's exactly what I thought. What the heck is a Juul? What is a Juul? A Juul is a closed loop vape system. It consists of a battery and a pre-filled pod. Pre-filled pod is filled with e-liquid with a high nicotine volume. A Juul is very easy to use. All you do is put the pod in and vape away. 
Lots of high school kids would never think of smoking. They've grown up with anti-tobacco ads. With this contract, I relinquish part of my freedom to you. The scary thing is they don't think of vaping as smoking a cigarette or as smoking. Vaping can deliver nicotine to your brain. It is true that jewels don't have a lot of the toxic chemicals that, say, a cigarette has. But a tiny jewel pod has the equivalent amount of nicotine that's contained in an entire pack of cigarettes. So why would kids jewel? They love the flavors. I've heard a lot of kids say, like, it just gives them a quick buzz. They feel good after they do it. You see the younger celebrities are holding a jewel in their hand. Mm -hmm. And everyone on Snapchat will, like, post videos of them jeweling. They just find it as a way to be cool. If you have money, you can get it super easy. Just ask anyone. One of the things that makes it really hard for educators is that jewels are really easy to hide. So if I'm a student, I'm not just like this, but if I have a pocket or if I, I put it right here. Jewels look so similar to, say, thumb drives, right? It's really easy to get confused. And of course, kids take advantage of this. So a lot of students told me about a game they play in class where a student will go up to a teacher who has no idea what a jewel is and say, hey, I've got my, you know, presentation on this thumb drive. Can I charge it on your computer, please? Because I really need to have it. And then they go ahead and charge their jewel on the teacher's computer and teachers have no idea. It's very tricky. It's made to be very tricky, to trick us. So it's, therefore, it's difficult as teachers to know if they're actually vaping. So what's a teacher to do? Here are some of the things you can look for in your classroom. So your typical high school bathroom, right? Frequent or long bathroom breaks. A lot of kids go to the bathroom and then they hang out dueling. In fact, it's become so common that schools across the country have either cut down on the number of bathrooms that are open, teachers may monitor the bathroom, sometimes even principals. You might have five or six kids hanging out in here with the door closed and vaping. Watch out for kids who cover their face with their hands, who sometimes have sleeves next to their nose, who put their head down often. It may be they're just tired, they're teenagers, right? But it could be that they're vaping in class. A principal I spoke to said one of the most effective methods he used was really involving parents. So for example, he didn't just talk to kids about the problem. He had after-school seminars where he would invite parents, and then it grew even bigger. It wasn't just parents, he actually invited the entire community so that there were lots of sets of eyes on his students. And parents are still really influential in their teen's life. I mean, just listen to what this one kid, Zane, said to me. My mama don't play that. <laughs> 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 yes, that's not simple. Your mom is a very yeah. smart woman. <laughs> yeah, my mom would kill me too. Like. There you go. There you have it, folks. Dr. West, you, yes, you, could, you could put the icing on this cake here now. Well, I want to um, say thank you so much for bringing me on the program. My school uh, thrust has been no tobacco and we will continue but I think we are going to move into the vaping realm as well given what I've just seen yes well let's say yes. could you comment on what you just saw here and and how you see how how, how they're going after that stuff out there but we have it here already yep. so well we, we know that because our teens and younger people are like those everywhere else they want to be cool mm. and they're influenced by marketing Mm -hmm. yep. And when you have your friends and everybody else as a group, we know about peer pressure and they're all together, boys or girls, and they're trying something, be it a, a new pair of clothing, shoes. But in this case, let's try this vaping or dueling. You can see how pervasive it is and how easy it is to spread. Uh, even, more sp even more than our present pandemic, you know, young people want to experiment. They want to identify as being individual. Yet still, they want to be the same as everybody else. Plus, you have millions and millions of Trinidad and Tobago dollars being spent by these companies to encourage this. Yep. So as a consequence, we have almost, I can't call it a pandemic, but one could say it's an epidemic okay, of this yeah. type of problem, where we have young people inhaling not only tobacco, 
but these vaping products. As a result, the lung diseases that we see now from tobacco and are clearly identified will become increasingly evident by the vaping products. These are vitamin E and many of the other um, flavorings that they have and other products they have, plus the addiction. Remember, nicotine causes a physical addiction, plus the physical addiction and psychological addiction that we're going to see. We've talked about this before. We do not want to see psychologically uh, dependent adults being produced in our, in our population, but this is exactly where we're heading. So we have to strengthen our educational uh, message. These products are legal, and therefore we cannot, there are no laws. We cannot come back to Jaron and his laws for tobacco, but what about the laws for, for, for vaping? These are things which we must get ahead of it and try and address it as soon as possible. And myself and my colleagues are going to be looking at this as a major issue and putting forward suggestions to the Ministry of Health and the Minister to try and pull back this kind of runaway horse, as you use the phrase, which is where we are. It is a big, big worrying problem. And we need to raise our game. I think I thank you for having these, uh, for inviting me on, myself and Jaron, to um, speak about this and to try and educate the children the adults, and the youngsters, because they're the, next children, they're the next teenagers coming up, and they have to be addressed as well. So we are ready for the challenge, and I think you are as well. We will continue. Thank you. Now is Mr. Collimo's turn to educate us, and um, we have a quite interesting segment with him because by September 25th, which was um, it is today, today <laughs> All sellers, suppliers, and importers of tobacco products are required to ensure full compliance with the Tobacco Control Act and its supporting regulations in which cigarette manufacturers must print pictures and illustrations that warn about the dangers of smoking on cigarette packs and other tobacco products. Mr. Collimo, welcome to Independency. Finally, and what are the new health warnings requirements let's start with that yeah come on again well um the graphic health care warnings requirements which was passed in parliament and brought forward by our honorable minister of health um mr teresi alsing in february last year now it gave um the tobacco industry a year um moratorium public moratorium to actually ensure that they comply with the packaging labor requirements on all tobacco pro um, products, meaning that all tobacco products are required to actually have the graphical care warnings pre-approved by the TCU and Ministry of Health. And those images um, is to, inf to inform and deter the public about the danger, danger about tobacco. So it has actually images of tobacco, um, as Dr. West earlier was saying, lung cancer, neck cancer, mouth cancer. It causes still births in women, impotency in men, um, it also costs you savings, so you lose money from actually purchasing tobacco cigarettes and also second hand smoking as children. So those requirements require that all tobacco products are required to actually um, by by tomorrow, which is the end of the moratorium today, are required to actually have 50% in the front and back of each tobacco product, including cigarettes, cigar boxes, and BDs. So it's something that is nothing new. And a lot of countries, over 127 countries, actually have that already in the world. And Jamaica, um, which we actually got um, approval to use the images, actually had that already. And St. Lucia as well. So those images were actually um, assessed and, and, and research were conducted to ensure that actually it impact upon the public to ensure that person actually stop smoking, especially children, and getting necessary support from the doctors and physicians. Images here. We have a, f a few examples of what you, you, you are speaking about. We Just hope. The one image. Um, but, um, Hingson, could you put up that image? Let Mr. Collie see. And is it this is what is required going forward? It's something like this we're speaking about here? Yeah, something like this, but um, it's not the pre approved images by Ministry of Health, but it's something similar. Right, so yes. It has yes. Here, like, um, the front and back. And it also shows it's both um, pictures and texts. Me and before Gart and Natasha, remember, we used to actually have the text only um, healthcare yes. warning that showed 
the Minister of Health says tobacco is dangerous to your health. Yes. Now, studies have shown that um, both pictures and text have a greater impact on actually informing and turning turn people from actually smoking. So we have, we have here, we have like things like um, lung can tobacco, tongue cancer. Um, we have here um, male smoking. We also have blindness too, which we actually have in our um, pre-approved um, healthcare warnings. So it actually, those images are actually graphic in nature. So it's not to actually, it's to deter us, not to encourage people to, to smoke. So it's like front and back of the pack, and it should be um, displayed in the principal area, easily displayed uh, for the public to see. Right. Now, yesterday, I was saying to you that um, I went to, to one of the leading supermarket chains here, and while in the line, someone um, asked for a pack of Dumoria. And when the girl is then she remembered with the so, uh, so, um she she had to send her another cashier because one cashier now alone is required to have cigarettes on display. Tell us about that because um the, the, you know they were very they were very careful and I realized that hey they fo they fall they fell into line already. So when you go in a supermarket now with all cashiers when all cashiers had cigarettes over their heads. Now, there will only be one cashier required to have those cigarettes? Um, correct. That's relating to um, cigarette dispensers. Mm -hmm. And the Ministry of Health and Tobacco Control Union informed all um, tobacco license holders in industry and even the business community like the Tobago Chamber of Commerce, the Tobacco Association, that all establishments are required to actually have um, one dispenser per outlet. Meaning before now, there were actually um, one um, dispenser per point of sale. I mean, different mm -hmm. cashers. You're seeing yes. um, supermarkets, the gas stations, uh, multiple dispensers. Now, it's, it's an enforcement of the regulations that require. And those dispensers, um, Gas and Natasha, also require to actually have um, displayed on them the healthcare warnings. And I don't know if you um, saw the dispensers that some persons that may have. It actually has the brand of cigarettes on it. It right. also has the logos, the companies, and those things are prohibited based on the regulations. So we form all of the business community and the tobacco um, industry that they're quite actually remove that, including healthcare warnings by um, by tomorrow. And 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 those um, dispensers are quite to actually have the white and gray. Now, Gat and Natasha. Now, it doesn't says any act. That a retail outlet, a wholesale outlet, requires to actually have a dispenser. It's an option for them to sell it. The access should actually be um, no self-serving, meaning that all tobacco products shouldn't be easily handled by the public or away from the shelves. And secondly, it shouldn't be displayed. It means it should be easily displayed. So if a retailer wants to actually have it in a drawer, no problem. But it shouldn't be easily accessible and um, 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 displayed by the public right and I, we've seen that in in some other countries where they they actually have like a like a white cupboard or something you don't know they're there but yes a, um they are they are not visibly um no they're not visible to anyone who comes to the to the establishment to purchase it so. like in canada for instance they they no no tobacco products are displayed they cover they have they have it like one of those um those sliding doors Mm. that they open up if somebody buys a cigarette and then they close it again. Yeah. Um, but we, we've not going that far. It's just that now, you know, they, you cut down on how many silvers. Mm -hmm. Yes, how much dispensers that dispensers. persons may have in their Dispensers, yes. One, one now. Yeah, so mm -hmm. only one in use, and it, um, it should actually have the healthcare warnings on them front or back, and if the, the um, establishment can actually show it on the back, it should be placed alongside each other, the images. So okay. actually, um, that, there are two, um, two sets of images, two um, A and B, each of eight sets, and they require to be rotated um, eight months, every eight months, meaning that we want to ensure, okay. for example, the public is not bored of the images, and that there are different images, like at the end of eight months, New images are um, included, and the old ones are phased out. So and these cycle are ministry, and these are ministry-approved mm -hmm. images. Correct. 
Mm -hmm. Those are images approved by the ministry and pre-approved, reviewed by the tobacco control unit. And also, once it's pre-approved, it's actually uh, um, the tobacco industry is the best allowed to release it for use. Well, Mr. Colimo, as soon as you all have those images, we'll be happy to share it with the public. Now, for those people who are just joining us, you're listening to Andy Penanchi, of course, and we are speaking with Mr. Jerome Collimo and Dr. Mark West. Um, Mr. Collimo, what now? What is the purpose? Some people may ask, what is the purpose of of these new requirements, and why now? All right, um, got good question. Now, those requirements, health messages, are, are proven to be demand one is demand reduction methods approved by the WHO Free the Convention to Tobacco Control, along with um, things written to like the tobacco tax, regulations requiring licenses, even as earlier you were sp um, speaking, no spoke in public places. So the studies have shown that when countries actually use those in combination, it reduces the prevalence of tobacco use in the country, especially among young children. So as you talked earlier about um, vaping and also youths, we want to ensure that those images, uh, um, like before the culture change, when our parents or grandparents used to smoke and used to go by the parlor to buy the cigarettes, that once you see those images, it's a turned off for children, youths. Because studies have shown the, that most persons start to smoke um, at 17 years in Trinidad and Tobago. Even before that, some schools actually have um, students smoking at 13 and 12 years. So we want to ensure that the, the youths don't smoke. So the demand reduction method used as actually proven by research based in countries like Brazil, Singapore, and Canada, it actually works in combination with cessation and support from the doctors where, where persons who smoke are getting necessary um, help. Right. And what, what, hap what will happen to retailers? What are the penalties for non-compliance with these new regulations? All right, first of all, now, if a supplier acquires tobacco cigarettes and doesn't comply with the passion labor requirements, based on the act, it could be seized by the authorized officers, by the police, tribal police service, and customs, who are aware of their role in, in the Tobacco Control Act to enforce it. And secondly, uh, based on the court and the fines. Now, on summary indictment, there's a fine of $100,000 or six months in prison. And upon conviction of indictment, there is a fine of $200,000 or a year in prison. That's for the, um, pers the person who owned the establishment. So we want to ensure that all persons are aware of those um, regulations. That is why beforehand, even three years in advance, we inform the tobacco license holders who had meetings with them, with them to prepare for this. It wasn't actually done overnight. We also, um, last year, released those images to them electronically, and they actually went to TCU, Tobacco Control Unit, for a review of their images and their products, which were pre-approved already for release. So we want to ensure um, by, to by tomorrow, everything is streamlined. So there's nothing new, and all the major stakeholders like this community, the, the industry were aware of it. Uh, even the authorized officers um, like the police service and customs are aware of the enforcement of it by tomorrow. So, and also we also have media, um, it's in the media as well for this week, this month. What are, one of the questions that um, on Facebook, um, <clears throat> Mr. Colimo, um, is sale to minors, and, and that is already an offense, isn't it? Correct. Now, it's an offense to sell to minors under the age of 18 years, legally a minor trying to be because 18 years. And any proprietor who sells um, tobacco cigarettes to a minor are liable under the um, regulations and the act. And they could actually get, um, upon the first conviction, um, they can fight um, $50,000 and three months in prison. Upon the second event, um, $100,000 or six months in prison. Upon the third offense, um, $100,000 and nine months in prison. Upon conviction now, $200,000 or a year in prison. So it's actually very serious to be selling, selling tobacco products, cigars, cigarettes, um, cartons to BDs, to minors. 
Now, um, we have someone out in Massachusetts listening this morning. Good morning, Mr. Hockey. And I want you to tell us, maybe you could send me a message. Um, what, what, what's the regulations out there like with the same thing of selling al- um, alcohol and cigarettes, tobacco products to minors? Because I, I know there are people who have had their license revoked because they, they were undercover police officers perusing these places. And maybe... Do, do, um, I have never seen it, but... Do know, we intend to employ to that know. tactic here too as well, Mr. <coughs> Colimo, where we would have undercover police in Port of Spain going through these malls because, you know, children love malls. And... Um, Um, are you hearing us still, Mr. Colimo? Yes, I'm hearing you. I hear now. Let's start in the background. Yeah, yeah, I'm hearing a, a, a beeping sound there. I don't know yeah. what is that. All right. Um, it's gone now. Oh, okay. It's gone now. Yes. So, would we, you know these children love malls, right? Um, mm-hmm. you, you think that they, they, we could have undercover, our undercover police here, our police officers undertake that exercise by walking through the malls and observing retailers as they sell these especially retailers who sell these vape pens and well i was just gonna ask about that garth in terms of of i i'm guessing that there are no regulations yet for the for the vape devices um and if mr colin walker tell us when when we plan to introduce some sort of regulation for these devices okay natasha um regarding the uh, vaping devices. The Ministry of Health, um, since two years ago, have been having consultation with stakeholders. Mm-hmm. We the act, and um, the act speaks specifically to tobacco, right? Not um, like vaping or e-cigarettes. Meaning that um, based on the videos shown, we realize that okay, that tobacco is very difficult to actually um, confirm. Tobacco is an imitation. Um, that but vaping is an imitation tobacco product. Yes. Where there are different devices which look like tobacco, which look like okay, a phone, a flash drive. It looks like a power bank. If you have watches too. So um, based on consultation, because consultation we had last year with um, police customs. We also had trade. We also had trend and labor standards. The ministry is working towards actually um, creating regulations to regulate vaping, similar to over 81 countries in the world, where that we know that is a public health concern that in, we had, based on our research, a Global Health Youth Tobacco Survey 2017, the ministry um, saw that in a population of, survey population of 4,200 um, students, that more than 70% of them vape mm-hmm. or use e-cigarettes. That's 13 to 15 years. That's young. Wow. And you know, it's a major public health concern. And we're working towards actually having regulations similar to like what they have in different countries where they're regulating underage vaping, mm-hmm. vaping for minors, like what we have in tobacco. Um, also, no vaping in public places because, for example, we, we see vaping in schools right now where sometimes our colleagues in the health, health education division ministry get called some schools to do sessions because they, they catch um children as you see in prestigious schools um vaping yeah 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 or even uh, vaping in the malls vaping um in toilets as you see so yes. it's like a concern because the, the tobacco industry is switching from tobacco to, to market and to target our youth right now with the different flavors that you see the um mango the banana the spice the mints and um, it's very trendy right now. We're seeing um, 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 like persons, um, actors, actresses actually vaping. And I think it's very cool. But they're not seeing the downside in the long run. So Dr. West was saying, right now it's um, new, but, we, we, but based on the um, research, we're not seeing the te- after 10 years what could happen in, based on the health issues, like the respiratory system, the cardiovascular system. So the Ministry of Health um, actually um, taking steps to ensure it's regulated soon. Okay. Um, Alison, <laughs> Alison Salandi, out there, I know you're in a different part of the U.S. You could tell us too what 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 are the um, the regulations out there because Maki 
out in Boston, he said the same did they have the cigarettes behind a glass case and it's locked away and it's only when someone calls for it then they get it. They don't sell alcohol or tobacco to minors. And you get I mean, uh, we've seen it, Natasha and I have seen it in action. And I think in Trinidad and Tobago here, Mr. Colimo and Dr. West, we need to turn the screws up a bit. Yep. And and this is what you're doing here. Yeah, it's, it's not going to be an easy task, but I hope you can get law enforcement on your side. Of course. And, and someone has just commented on Facebook, actually, about, about a vape shop that has opened on the corner of Picton and Tragrate Road, which, yeah. is, uh, which is close to many schools in that area. Thank you. Which should not be. Correct. Which should not be allowed to happen. But in Trinidad and Tobago here, you know how things go, right? Um, and it's unfortunate, but you cannot put the, the product right where the children pass in that they can see it and don't expect them to gravitate to it because they're very colorful, they're very attractive, they know the colors that people use to attract people with it. Someone asked us to show the video on students hiding vaping devices. We'll show it again before we go. Folks, um, because as I said, for principals and teachers and, and school safety officers, school security, you need to see the, you need to know what these devices look like because they can be right under your nose and you don't know it's a device. Um, we need to get parents involved. And when a teacher confiscate, confiscates a device, don't go in school and beat up the teacher, please. Instead, support the schools and what they're trying to do. Dr. West is back on the line, and, and thank you very much, Doc, for, for, for joining us again. Um, uh, Dr. West, you, 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 would you like to add anything to that? Well, um, yes, I think um, you hit the nail on the head. We need to bring up to the public awareness schools the serious health risks and dangers that are now being experienced, not only by the tobacco, but by vaping as well. And um, we have to, as I said, change gears and move up to the challenge because while we're closing or trying to close one door with tobacco, another one has been opened, aggressively so, widely so. And yes. as I said, children, the teenagers, they're young, they're, they're headstrong, they want to experiment, they want to be cool. It's, an, it's a fertile ground to, to put something like this in. So it's a lot of work to try and stop it. But we know down the line that the effects are going to be very bad. So we're going to try and rise to the challenge. Now, we, 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 sorry, we wish we could take your calls, folks, but the phone lines here are not working. So um, you could, if you have any mess other questions or message, please send it to, um, to Facebook or YouTube so that we, um, we could have the gentleman um, answer it before they leave. Shortman, please go back to that video again. For those of you who are just joining us, there are some people who missed it. So video C, students hiding vaping devices. Let's go back to that and so that we can get some people occur with what to look for. Even parents with what to look for. And we're begging parents, if you vape, please, you have children who will follow in your footsteps. And in the long run, there's been a price to pay. Let's go to that video. Take a close look. This student is outfitted with vaping devices, but you can't see them. Why? They're designed to look just like normal school gear for sale online and in vape shops, giving kids new ways to hide their vaping habits anywhere they go, including school. It's rampant. I think every administrator who has a middle school and high school are grappling with vaping issues. Superintendent Melissa Varley oversees the Berkeley Heights School District in New Jersey. It's virtually undetectable. We don't know if a student is vaping in a classroom. So would you know what to look for? We're taking over a classroom at this high school. It's filled with student volunteers. Thank you guys. We're going to plant these hidden vaping devices and bring in teachers and parents and see just how well they do at spotting the vape. I get to work. Here's one that's designed to look just like a black marker. Stashing stuff all over the classroom. So this guy looks like a USB. It's not, it's a vape. And on students too. Sophia looks like she's just wearing a regular hoodie, but underneath a vaping device. Some vapes even look just like school supplies. Looks just like a pen, but the vaping device is inside and you can write with it. Time to bring in our volunteers. I'm Vicki Wynn with the Today Show. It's nice to meet you. What's your name? Miss Moretti. Okay, Miss Moretti. Yes. We want to know if you can spot the vape. So, 
We have outfitted this classroom with vaping devices. Look high, look low. You ready? I think I'm ready. You get one minute. Okay. All right, here we go. She spots a couple of them. That device that Dom's got there. But breezes right past most. I think that could be. Before time Three, runs out. Two, ooh. and that is time. How many of you had a vaping device that she spotted? Three items, not bad. How many of you actually have vaping devices? But she missed 11 of the 14 items we hid. It's scary because it could be just in plain sight. Some teachers spot a couple of the more obvious ones. That looks like one, too. But most miss the harder to find items like this watch. Sam is wearing what looks like a smart watch, uh. but if you press this button, mm -hmm. this part comes out. You can fill this with nicotine and it's an e-cigarette. It blends in so nobody would ever know. All five teachers missing this vape backpack. This one's got a hidden device right here in the strap. And I'm a hiker. I mean, this is the first thing I would think of as be a camelback so that we can get water through it. And the hoodie. I think it's ingenious marketing and I'm a little frightened. This could be happening right under your nose. Absolutely. It could be happening in my house. I have a 15 year old. Wow. So now, no hoodies. Even this school aide, a retired police officer, missing the watch and pen. Very disheartening that there's so many out there that the kids can get access to. What about parents? Will they do a better job spotting the vape? I think that's a vaping device. Not this group. He was writing with a pen, but inside the pen... <gasps> got me. Right, I'm gonna go home and check pens. Parent after parent also mistaking the decoys for vapes. I was pointing at this one, but that looks one looks fairly uh, suspicious as well. That's just a marker, and they confuse the real vapes for regular items. What did you think this was? Didn't even think to look at that. Probably a marker, or an eraser, or a highlighter. The most any of our volunteers spotted just five of the 14 items we hid. That's 36% a failing grade. It's very, very scary. An eye-opening experience for both teachers and parents. If you have to hide something, then there's something wrong with it. It's scary to see how easily they can hide things like that. Parents need to be more invasive in their kids' spaces and really actively engaged. Yeah. Yeah, we reached out to the Vapor Technology Association. They told us they don't approve of underage use of these types of devices, and they're working to raise the purchase age to 21. I brought some of these items so you all could see. Yeah. You know, this one looks like a marker, and that's what people would mistake it for. Check that out. This is the highlighter we were talking about, Hoda. Oh, yeah. And then, you know, as you know. Let's show that watch. watch. That's great. Yeah, watch okay. This one, you just pop it out right mm -hmm. here, and it tells the time, so you can easily see that uh -huh. there's a digital this readout. Is, right. The this is crazy, is the one. hoodie. Nobody got the hoodie. Craig, I'll return your hood hoodie later. But, <laughs> no, uh, no, but it's insane. I you're mean, right. it's like they a look... vaping thing in here. Vicky, but if, if right. you're a teacher in class, like, wouldn't you see a kid who's like, even if they're... You would think so, but they break off into study groups, and that was what the teachers yeah. were telling us. You're dealing with 30 kids at Walk a time. Walk to the bathroom. Exactly, yeah. down the hall. I right. mean, it just makes it so much easier. And when you have a little tiny pen like this that, yeah. that you can Come actually on. do Look your homework that. with. Yeah, that's yeah. crazy. It's a real big challenge for teachers and um, um, parents, and they were talking about schools have anti-tobacco campaigns. Check to see if your district has one like the one we were at. That's another way that you can stay on top of this yeah. and have those conversations with the kids as yeah. well. Vicky, All right, Vicky, thank, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank And, um, and before, as we wrap up, um, I wanted to, uh, to, to go to Mr. Collymore and, and so he could share a little bit more about the cessation programs that are available. If people would like to seek help to stop smoking, what, how, can they, how can they do this? Okay, um, thanks, Natasha. Now, there are various um, session clinics which are operated by primary care physicians in different regional health authorities. So there's one in Ar Arima, there's also in Shogonas, there's um, in Southwest Regional Health Authority, there's what there's three in fact, Kuva District Health Facility, Superior District Health Facility, and Indian Walk. And um, also to note, Natasha, there's also um, primary care physicians who are actually train by Chef Health. Mm -hmm. And the primary organization in cessation. So you might not actually have the health centers, but they are trained primary care physicians who are able to actually um, counsel patients who are struggling with that dependency too. So we also have on our website too the list of the clinics which patients can be referred to mm -hmm. for greater support as well. Yeah. Okay, All Dr. Right. West, is there is um you want to answer that please? No, I think um, Mr. Collimore has 
has, has, has uh, touched all, all the main points. Uh, in terms of there is help out there for people who want to stop, they need to approach their nearest private, um, health facility and inquire. Excuse me. <coughs> right. And, uh, hopefully, we will be able to accommodate or a reference will be given. So, Dr. Uh, Mr. Colimo, once again, sellers, suppliers, importers of tobacco products are required to ensure full compliance, the Tobacco Control Act. Now, let's say we, a uh, normal citizen, walk into an establishment and still see someone selling cigarettes lab lash and not worrying about these regulations and how can the citizen get involved? How can they report? Who can they report to? Is there a number to call and say, well, look, I just came out of, you know, Joe Schmo supermarket <laughs> and Joe Schmo still selling cigarettes to minors and they have no number of dispensers up. How do we get that to you all? Great um, question, Gart. Um, on the Ministry of Health website, on the tobacco control unit, we have a public comments form where the public can also make complaints about any tobacco violations. Like, um, apart from uh, selling cigarettes, which is the correct packaging, things like um, cigarette, selling cigarettes to minors. Hmm. All those uh, violations, you can actually um, get a form on the Ministry of Health website on the tobacco control. And please make a report and email us. And we'll actually um, review it and investigate it or even refer to the necessary authorities, whether it's the police or customs, for the investigation. Right. Mr. Right. Colimo, Dr. West. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. You know, you all don't have a sexy job. This is not a sexy topic, <laughs> but it's very, very important to Trinidad and Tobago. You all are doing tremendous work, and we'd like to thank you so much for spending the time with us here this morning and educating us and the public and the people of Trinidad and Tobago. God bless you all, and thanks again. And we also thank the Ministry of Health um, Commons Unit, Ms. Simone Thomas and um, Odessa, Odessa Kerr, Kerr for facilitating this for program, reaching for reaching out to us to have this program today. And yep. it's very timely. Today is D-Day. And so, gentlemen, thank you once again. And we will keep in touch. God bless. Keep up the great work. Thank you, Garth and Sasha, for being here. Garth, thank you very much for giving us the opportunity to discuss this very important topic. You're we welcome. Would come back and discuss it. Yes. Because it needs to be repeated and it needs to be propagated, the problems that exist with tobacco and vaping in our, yes. in our culture. It's our children that have been targeted. We're treating the older generation as well, but this is children. And that is uh, our future. So it's a challenge to our future. We need to sit up and pay attention. Yes, sir. Yes, Gentlemen, indeed. thank, thank you, you once you again. So God bless you all. Take care, right? right. Okay. Bye-bye. Um, folks, and, and if you we could ask the comms department too as well, if you can visit our Facebook page, there are some questions. Maybe you can answer best to the public who would have posted questions here. So they say if you all if you're listening, um could you visit our Facebook page and dependency and probably you can answer some questions on behalf of the gentleman we just interviewed. Yep. Um folks, you all know that we had another loss. Um I'm gonna say it to, uh, Mr. Edward Snags too, who lost his, his wife. wife. Yes. Um I, I don't know where all of these people go in at the same time, but you all mm. Natasha lost her mom just at the beginning of this week. And um you know we of course, I want to extend condolences again um, to Mr. Snags, and but let Natasha will tell you now about the arrangements for Hazel Brown. You know, she lost her mom, and I'll hand you over to Natasha to tell you more about sure, what the plans sure. are. Um, <coughs> Hazel Brown departed his life on Thursday morning, and um, not many people know, surprisingly, that, that she's my mom, but I, I guess now is the time. And I, I just wanted to say um, on behalf of, you know, our family, um, tremendous thanks to everybody who reached out, who called, who messaged um, with your words of condolences. They were very helpful and, and continue to be helpful to us in our time of grief. And we will be sharing details about um, the funeral service uh, very soon. We are trying to... Um, to make it as 
inclusive for everybody. So of course it will be live in person, but al we'll also have a, a video stream which we will share. So look out on her Facebook page and mine, um, and God said, I'm sure he will share it as well. And in the press for the details about the um, funeral service for Hazel Angela Brown, who, I mean, she was my mom, but I, I know um, how much she meant to so many other people in Trinidad and Tobago. Um, it's a, as as Garth man, mentioned, it's a tremendous loss, not just our family, but to this country. She was um, one of the, I mean, we were talking about patriotism not too long ago, right? And, and I think she is foremost among um, patriotic citizens in Trinidad and Tobago. So we are planning for a really nice send-off for her. And most importantly, that her legacy and her, her activism, her advocacy does not die with her. Um, Garth and I were talking this morning about, about that and the fact that um, she was one of those people who stood up and spoke out about things that she cared about and people that she cared about, uh, and she wasn't afraid to do so. That was one of the um, her most um, admired qualities, her fearlessness yes. um, in saying and, and, most importantly, doing what needed to be done to assist people who um, either did not have the voice or the means to, to do better for themselves. So we, we wanna, I would like to encourage everybody to continue to, to speak up and speak out about things that, that are happening in our country um, and, and, and preserve her, her legacy of, of doing. I don't wanna just say speaking, but doing. She was a very action-oriented person um, always looking for solutions to problems, and, and I, I would like to encourage us all to to, to continue to do that. Yes, folks. Um, I again to you know when when we got the call on Thursday, it was uh, it, it was hard. It was hard, you know, dealing with deal with, and I could imagine it was hard for me, much more Natasha, and and I mean Hazel. Be my mother in law and all of that, but mm -hmm. Hazel was no easy, she was, was no walk in the park. <laughs> no, and <laughs> I will always it's remember, not good. <laughs> <laughs> I will always remember that lady. Uh, uh, but uh, in the end, I've always said that Hazel Brown is a mother in law that people like me should have, hmm. and um, and I mean that because you know, I, I kept in focus who she was and how important she was to train and Tobago, and she wasn't about to relinquish her last daughter. To, <laughs> to, to the likes of to, to, uh, <laughs> oh, to wanna be reintegrator. <laughs> she wasn't about to do that. So I had to work very hard to convince that lady that Natasha yes. was in the right hands. Yes, but yes. I did eventually and um you know it was a glorious day for me when she introduced me as a son in law. Indeed. I will never forget that. <laughs> um, but folks, um so as Natasha said, um you will hear more about Hazel's um going home ceremony and we have a special next Sunday mm -hmm. with Dr. Pottinger because remember we were to feature Hazel. It was supposed to be done this Sunday. Yes. But we had to we adjust the schedule. So next Sunday we will be on from two o'clock, two to four. Next Sunday, please God. And um with that time everybody will be home and you will take your time and sit and listen to that feature that Hazel did. We we recorded her for Independency T V. Mm -hmm. Um and as you may know she is a cancer survivor. Twice. And um, that was one of the, the issues that she championed heavily yes. um, in terms of not only her own, you know, um, experience and, and health challenges, but also she's well known for assisting cancer patient, patients from Guyana mm -hmm. to, be, to receive treatment here in Trinidad and Tobago. And yeah. um, so that, that is one of her, her legacies that, that we are going to... Um, that we have have supported on our independency, and and we'll use that that one little nugget of of of, um, of activism in her life to to celebrate her next week. Yes. So, Adam Gardner and Annette and Allison and Pearl and all of you loyal supporters and faithful fans of our independency, we thank you very much for your sentiment shared this morning. 
Thank you so much for, as usual, looking out for us every Sunday morning. And we will continue with the work here on our independence. So, folks, we've got to run. It's that time. Major, Major news, news up, up next, next. with Miss Bayonet Face. Um, Miss Janelle Wilson, who always has the Bayonet <laughs> Face on. Very serious lady. She'll take you to top of the hour with the news. So, have a good one, folks. Take care. Good afternoon. Gary, short man, everybody, thank you. Dr. West, Dr. and Mr. Collymore. Have a great week. Broadcast.